Today we're looking at building the lift up top coffee table. You can see on the screen right here, I've got one uh, that I've just roughed out. Uh, there are some dimensions that are really important, and there are some dimensions that you're going to want to check wherever it's going to go in your house to make sure that it's going to fit and work for you. A um, couple things. This project is, is designed to be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. I realize that this is built during the, the COVID-19 term. If you're watching this later on, that's great. You can still build this. But this is designed to be kind of a simple project that with some basic hand tools, which I know a lot of you have at home, you're going to be able to build there. Now, you can take this and modify it because there may be some tools that, that you don't have that you need to build this. But I'm going to build this along with you guys. So if you want to push yourself a little bit, you certainly can. Lots of different options for this, but I'm going to use the tools that I have in my shop. You can make it modified to work for your shop, depending on what you have. So before we go any further with this, I want to make sure that you get these ordered. Sometimes they can take a while, but in our page called At Home Project, this is the list that I've got right now. This is um, the one that we are that you're working on right now is called the Lift Up Coffee Table Plans. It's not a hot link now, but you're going to find these plans linked right here. Um, the coffee table mechanism is on Amazon. And as you know, on Amazon, prices fluctuate all the time. Uh, and sometimes things take a long time to get here. I know the first time I ordered these hinges, it took like a month and a half to come. So if you know this is a project that you're going to want to tackle, order these things right away. Luckily for me, it's shown that these are going to show up on Saturday. Uh, so it, it is good that that's, that's, um, that's happening sooner for you. Also know that if, if this one is sold out, it seems like these things change all the time, the suppliers and vendors. Make sure you read the specs that talks about how much they lift up. Um, usually they're six to 10 inches. You can kind of see here. Make sure you're reading these. This will change depending on who they are made for because you want to make sure that when this lifts up, it sits on top of your knees and it's not hitting you in the shins. So just keep in mind, read the reviews on there. Make sure that, that it's going to do exactly what you want to do because we're going to leave it up to you to decide on some of these dimensions. I'm going to go with what works for me in my house, but you may want yours to be different than this. So here we are. Um, you can choose to draw this as components or not. The nice thing with components is we get that, that cut list extension that we talked about before if you're using the downloaded version. Uh, I like drawing things as a component because if I want to change something, not everything is all mushed together. So I'm going to start out by drawing the top. I think that's the easiest, and that's probably the thing that's going to be the most flexible for you that you need to decide on. My top, I'm having be 20 inches by 30 inches. You're not going to be able to go much less than 20 inches because that mechanism isn't going to fit in the opening if you go much less than that. That was a mistake I made on the very first one of these is that the mechanism didn't have enough room to, to collapse all the way without hitting uh, the skirt of the coffee table. So I wouldn't go much less than 20 inches, but you can go as wide as you want. There is even the prototype in class where we had uh, a drawer sitting on one side of these. Totally fine. You could probably even sneak a drawer right in the middle here if you want to have it a little challenge. Uh, that's not going to be that difficult to do. But I'm going to make my top this exact same size, 20 by 30. Remember, first step is to relabel the size 20 by 30 you can see it's way closer to me that's why it looks bigger than that one but it is the right size um, your top is most likely going to be three quarter inch material so I pull it up three quarters of an inch and then make this thing a component right away before you start adding other things to it now I'm going to orbit around to the bottom side of this um, I like a one inch overhang some of you like a bigger overhang if you want a bigger handle to grab Totally fine, but I want the closest my legs come to here to be one inch. And I'm going to go one inch all the way around, making sure that this thing snaps in the right location. You can see how that went up. Sometimes SketchUp is funky when we have the wrong view on, that kept snapping in the wrong place. There we go. And I want my legs to be three inches by three inches squared. So I got my threes, threes, 
in my threes. Now, I'm going to place this, and I'm going to extrude mine down 17 inches. So 17 inches is about the height of where a couch is at. Now, your couch might be different, but 17 inches is generally a standard height for something we sit on. So whether you're making a bench, a kitchen, dining room table, uh, 17 inches is very comfortable. Uh, and so I want that to be about the same height as this, the seating surface that I'm sitting on. So it lifts up that six inches or so, it's going to get over my knee. Uh, one thing that I also like to do is after I make this a component, I'm going to have all the legs match this. So if I hold down control, I'll hit take the move tool, I'll hold down control. You can see it adds a little plus there. I'll grab a corner and I want these to all be based off the same design so that when I change once, I hit control again. And then I hit control again. So now if I decide, oh man, you know what? I don't really like the size of those legs. I want to make them skinnier. I want to make them taller. Whenever I change one, let's make sure that they are all a component now, but whenever I change one, you'll notice the rest of them will change. So I can make them shorter or taller, depending on what my design change is. That's another benefit of making things components. Now I think this looks a little bit muddy with all these layout lines, so I'm gonna say delete guides. Now I'm starting to get a table. Um, the Those mechanisms need to have a flush piece in here. So we'll call this the skirt frame. And we want the skirt frame to be flush with the sides here. So to do that, I'm going to put another guideline in here. And the piece of wood is going to be 3 quarters of an inch thick. So I'm going to go over 0.75. Then I'm going to draw this rectangle. And remember, since it's a component, it's sitting on top of the top. <laughs> it's not merging with the top. And that's a good thing. And I want it to be at least 5 inches tall because that mechanism needs some space. Now, I'm gonna draw the guidelines over here, but I'm just going to steal, whoops, I'm gonna steal the, the side that I just made, but I need to know where it goes. I probably wouldn't have to do this second one, but it sets my mind at ease to know that it's there. So I'm gonna grab this guy, and I always wanna grab it. Oh, I need to make a component first. Side skirt. Um, I always need to grab the move tool and I want to grab a corner so I've got a great reference spot. So I'm going to grab a top corner up here after I hit the control button. And this is going to go right. Oh boy, this can be hard to see. There. And I'll just orbit around the inside. Yep, that snapped to the right spot. I'm going to get rid of those guidelines because I don't need them. I'm going to click just in space to get that deselected. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my front. So I'm going to draw my guideline. If you don't have all these toolbars, you go up to View, Toolbars, and I love the large tool set. So make sure that's checked. Um, edit, Getting Started are also nice to have there as well. It's just going to let me draw a line here. Sometimes it gets goofy. So if that's the case, I know that I'm three inches back, so I can snap it right there. 0.75, I'm just going to draw this in right now because I'm here. Let's see if I can get straight underneath of this, if I can see both sides. And I can just snap this to be even there. Remember, make this a component. So front, back, skirt. Grab a corner here, hit control, bring it over there. Now, the reason it's really important to make those components is because watch what I'm going to do here. You may not want a bottom. Um, I want to put a bottom in here because I can use it to put things. I can store remotes. I can store magazines in there. It's kind of like a hidden storage compartment that most people aren't going to see because most people aren't going to know that the top of the coffee table lifts up. So to figure out how to put a, to put a bottom in here, it's really easy because I can just take, whoops, if you ever do that and get lost, hit this button. 
want to make sure and I'm actually going to get rid of this one now because I don't need it for reference anymore. You probably don't have a reference one. But now all these parts are components. So if I want to draw my data in there, instead of having to, to get real goofy about drawing in there, I can take this, grab the move tool, hit control, pull one out here in space. And now remember, because this is a component, whatever I do to this will happen in here. So I want to make sure I'm editing the component, so I double click on it. I'm going to go up a half inch from the bottom, and I'm just going to put a quarter inch bottom in there. If you don't have quarter inch material at home, you can do something different. If you've got more half inch, or you can even make it a three quarter inch, if you would like. And then I just push this in. I'm going to push it in a quarter inch. And then I'm going to delete the guides. I'm going to select just the air out here. And then I can confirm before I erase anything that indeed it did. But notice this, it copied that. We need this one. We'll say flip along, and I always get this wrong. Oops, that wasn't the right one. Flip along red. There we go. So that mirrored it, so that's facing in. So now that data is going in. And I can just erase this one. And I'll do the same thing here. Control, pull it out. Double click it, so we're modifying it. 0.5, enter. 0.25, enter. Let's draw a rectangle. Five. Delete the guides, click in space, so it's unselected, and then just verify. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be okay. I um, I accidentally pulled this one out. Uh, I must have not hit control, but that's okay because I can just move it right back in. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not from that view. There we go. So I got that back in. And the exact same thing here, I just have to flip along. Components green, there we go. Now the one thing you're gonna notice is when you're putting this bottom in, is that you're gonna have to clip the corners. So you, if you have the bottom being a rectangle, which we'll do here in a second, um, we'll have to just somehow sand it off, cut it off the corners to get around uh, the square base. Now putting this together, I'm gonna do pocket screws into here um, you could probably, if you don't have a pocket screw jig, what I would do is take a drill bit, maybe an eighth of an inch drill bit, and put a little hole right here at an angle going into here. And then you could put a screw going right into there. Uh, you could also, if you don't want to go that route, another good option uh, is if you would glue a corner block. So let's say you put a square in here. You wouldn't be able to have the... Um, you won't be able to have a bottom if you do this, but if you put a square block in here, and then you could screw this to here and screw this to here, um, now you've got a base that's good and strong, and you can get little angle brackets that can attach to the top. So they're L-shaped, they're steel, they got holes in them uh, that you can use to attach the top to the bottom. That way you've got this being strong because you've attached it and glued it here to here, um, and then you can attach it to the top, or you could you want to try to figure out how to pilot hole a, a hole through here and put screws going in here and here. That should stay pretty strong. Um, ignore what I said about screwing the skirt frame to the top because then our top's not going to be able to lift up. So you'll want to put screws all the way through here, get a pocket screw jig, uh, figure out some way of attaching those that's going to be, be relatively strong. Um, if you got questions on that, see me, but I'm going to use a pocket hole jig. Uh, they're not very expensive. You can buy them for 30 bucks at um, at some stores, or you can even just kind of do it yourself. Take a, an eighth of an inch drill bit or so, drill in at an angle, and get it into your side. So be creative with that. You got to be resourceful at times like this. Um, other thing we want to, well, let's finish this bottom part. So I'm going to put a bottom in here. Uh, I'm going to draw the bottom. To do that, um, Keep in mind, it's got this little quarter inch nub right here. So we'll we'll address that in a second. Everything's a component. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangle inside of this track. And 
Now I should be able to pull that rectangle out. Now here's where it gets a little tricky, trying to get to the bottom view of this. <laughs> it's like I zoomed out a little too far. Here we go. Um, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to I'm holding my middle finger on the middle button of the mouse on edge. So that is only on the edge of my skirt frame. It's not going into the dado. So here's what we do. We make this thing a component. Call up the bottom, create. Okay, so I did not, it's not going into the dado here at all, or the dado here at all, or the dado here at all, but it is inside of that dado. So I need to add a little bit to that bottom. So I'm going to hit control, pull the bottom out, and look at this. Notice that it's, it's a thin sheath. That's a problem. Um, I'm going to step back. So to make the bottom, I'm just going to draw a rectangle here. I'm going to go here. He's got to fight me now. See if I can do it better from this angle. There. Now I'm going to pull this up 0.25. And I don't have to have the bottom drawn inside of my cabinet. So I'm going to take this guy now, double click on that, make it a component, call it good bottom. And I'm just going to have this thing hanging out over here on the side. Because I don't need it to be in there. But what I do need to do is make it the right size. Because right now it's just going to fall all the way through my project. So now that I got it selected, I'm going to do, I'm going to make it a quarter inch bigger in all these directions. So that it goes inside the dado. So I'll go here, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. And then the last one, I'm only going to add an eighth of an inch because I want to have myself a little wiggle room. And I'm actually going to take an eighth of an inch off of here. So I added it the full quarter on two sides and just an eighth on the other side. So my bottom is not the exact right size. A little bit small will work. So now I've got my bottom. I've got all my pieces here. I should be good to go with this drawing. Now, just like with our other parts, we can make scenes. We're going to need to make scenes um, if this is going to be our capstone drawing that we do. We've got to make the scenes like we did in the practice assignment. So. If you're going to be drawing this for capstone, that's great. Make those scenes. And I'm not going to show you how to do this on that, this video, but if you go back to that practice video that we did, you'll be able to see those scenes, how to make them. It's not very difficult, but we want to get some dimensions on here so that we can turn this into a professional set of woodworking plans. Remember that professional set of plans is going to, you should be able to pass this off to anybody and they're going to be able to see how big all of these part, parts should be. Let me know if you got questions. Um, go back and watch that practice capstone design video if you forgot how to do the scenes and to export the parts.